when everything is done, we need to see uh, NetFlow data from our firewall looking like this. We need to be able to detect and see uh, some uh, malicious activity. As you can see here, this is a command and control, data exfiltration, initial access. I have some rules that are firing in here and I can tell if something funny is happening. Hello and welcome to IT Security Labs. Today I'm going to show you how to set up this lab that you're looking at right now. As you can see, I have data that's coming in my lab and I'm able to monitor all my traffic. This is an Elastic SIM solution and I'm going to show you how to set it up from the beginning all the way until you get data that looks like this. If you're not familiar with the Elastic SIM solution, it's part of the Elastic Stack and with my setup that I'm going to show you here, you are going to be able to set it up in a home environment or in a test environment and be able to get data and monitor it. This lab is for those people who are interested in learning cybersecurity, who want to know how to detect attacks in a network. If you are brand new to cybersecurity or if you are just interested in monitoring your environment and collecting data, then you need to watch this series. We are going to be working off this generic network diagram and what we are doing is we're just connecting from the internet and we have a firewall, a switch and a server, a server that's going to be running uh, most of our equipment here. You can set this up in VMware like I do here. I have VMware ESXi running on one single Dell server. As you can see here, you can install ESXi for free. You can also use a uh, virtual box. Uh, or VMware uh, Fusion or VMware Workstation. As long as your machines have enough resources, you should be able to set this lab that we have here up. I suggest maybe 24, 16 to 24 gigs of RAM, depending on your setup, and about 500 gigs of storage on the hard drive. So what are we doing here? Since now we are getting started. We are going to be setting up this lab with access to the internet, a proper firewall. I suggest you use PFSense if you don't already have a normal firewall. Then we are going to be collecting data from a switch because we need to monitor that. Then in addition to that, we are going to be using Ansible to automate our installation. Nowadays, it's best that we automate this installation so we don't do it manually. So I have a Git, GitHub uh, page that I have in, in my name. I'm going to link it in the description. And so I have a playbook for Ansible to install the Elk sim, sim server. I'm going to be working on another playbook to install all the different components so you can quickly and uh, readily install this using Ansible automatically. And in addition to that, you're just learning also uh, another wonderful automation tool so we don't have to do things manually. These two servers here, we're going to install an Ansible server because we need to automate everything. Then we also install, need to install our SIM server. And when we, after we install those two, we can run our Ansible playbook and install the SIM in less than two seconds. My Ansible is going to be running in CentOS. Uh, my SIM server is going to be running in Ubuntu. Uh, then uh, I will have an Ubuntu client, another one. Then I will have a CentOS client and I will have a Windows client. This is so that I can show you how to collect the metrics from all these different uh, clients. When everything is done, we need to see uh, NetFlow data from our firewall looking like this. We need to be able to detect and see uh, some uh, malicious activity. As you can see here, this is a command and control, data exfiltration, initial access. I have some rules that are firing in here and I can tell if something funny is happening. So let's get started here. Let's not waste time. Uh, let me install my Ansible server. So I'm going to install CentOS 7 and install Ansible on it. Then uh, I have uh, Elk Sim here as well. So my Ansible server, I already have one running here, but to show you, I'm just going to say uh, add new virtual machine. The beauty about v uh, VMware ESXi is I have templates, but if you don't have templates, just know how to deploy a brand new machine. So I, you should be able to deploy a machine without uh, any troubles here. Mine is going to be a CentOS template and I will name this 
Ansible 1. And the reason why I'm showing you this is so that you can see how many resources I'm also giving to these machines, because that's very important. I have one ESXi running on a R710. And then um, this machine, I'm going to put it on my external drive here. And then I would say on my CPUs, uh, this one doesn't need much. I can give it two. Um, let's just leave it at four. Just in case we decide to run something here. Four gigs of RAM, 50 gigs on that drive. Uh, let's give it one network adapter. And all right, now we can finish. Once we finish and uh, do finish here, it's going to automatically create my machine for me and name it Ansible 2. So it's that simple. If you have any virtualization platform, say a virtual box, follow the virtual box steps of installing a CentOS 7 or CentOS 8 machine. While that is happening, let's go ahead and install our next machine, which is the SIM server. This is the most important one because it's the one that hosts all of our data and we end up seeing like this. So for this one, the resources are the most important things. You need to know exactly uh, what to give and how much data you're going to be sending to it. Then we'll use the Ansible machine uh, right here to automatically provision this one and autom automatically provision these as well. So that's what we're doing here. So let's go ahead and say um, that one is already done, as you can see, but uh, let's create a second one, then sign into these machines and get started with the installation. So for my Elk Sim machine, I'm also going to say new virtual machine. Again, this is very important for you to see the resources that I'm giving this machine. I'm deploying it from template. I already have a template in my data center here and it's called an Ubuntu template. And this is where things get interesting, right? Okay, so I maybe let's name this three. I already have two. All right, Sim three, here we come. And then next, I'm going to put it in my external storage. This is iSCSI I storage. I don't encourage you to use iSCSI finicky. I'm trying to move away from it. I want directly connected storage, preferably SSD. But for now, this is what I have. In a little bit, I'll upgrade my, my lab. Then next. And uh, then let's see, next. And we finish. So if you don't know anything about Ansible, just Google Ansible automation and I, I encourage you to spend some time reading documentation from the Ansible website. It's super easy. Uh, just read about Ansible and get used to the Ansible uh, documentation. It's very easy, seriously. So let's go back to our machine here. All right, our Ansible machine, let's launch it. Launch it in web console. Okay, so I need to change the host name for this machine. This is my Ansible machine. So uh, instead of calling it SIM2, I need to switch the name to Ansible. So to do that, oh, two. So now I, all right, now I set it up. If I say bash, it says Ansible 2. So our machine name is Ansible 2. Uh, let's find out what its IP address is here, IPA. It's now set to 192.168.5.72. So let's go to a diagram here and say our Ansible server is now in 192.168. Dot five dot seventy two. Right now we know that's our Ansible server. Let's go back and find out what the IP address for our um, Elk three is. This is our new machine, so, so let's power it on. I like using this platform because I can take snapshots of my machines. If I mess up afterwards, I can always go back and revert. So let's we are launching our SIM two. There it is. And as soon as it's done, we'll sign in, uh, change its host name, and also uh, find out what else is there. But once it's starting up, uh, let's show you here the settings, right? Because this is very important. So let's edit the settings. Um, here it is memory, 16 gigs, CPU, I gave it eight CPUs. Uh, my hard disk is 500 gigs of so uh, not solid state. I'm connected to one network adapter. Ideally, you want to connect this to two, but um, I have one for now. So my SIM solution is uh, loading up. 
There it is. It's my Ubuntu 1804. Suggest you update this to the latest version of Ubuntu. It should work. So let's sign in. All right, so now that we're in, first thing that we need to do is let's change this to SIM3 instead of SIM2 because if you look here for consistency, it says SIM3. So let's name it SIM3. All right, so we are setting the host name. Let's put our password. And now if we say bash, just to see if it worked, there it is. So it's now named SIM3. So this is it for this video. We were able to set up just our machines in here. The biggest takeaway are the resources that I gave these machines. In the next video, I'm going to show you how I'm going to install Ansible on our Ansible machine. And then in the same video, we will deploy Elk Sim using Ansible. So I will see you in the next video.